So you've been out lately or what? Yeah. We're going to introduce uh, Keenan uh, right now, but I was going to tell you this weekend I did some gigs and on uh, my tour and um, flu coach, as always, you know, man of the people. What I don't realize <laughs> when, you, when you fly, like if it's Southwest, you stand there and then they go, oh, almost any airline. I just hear them go, okay. And I go to get on. They go, right now we're going to start. We're just going to start with like little babies and people that need some help. Okay. So they pile on. Now, uh, any <laughs> veterans from the military? So yeah, they, they got that's on. good. Then they go first class or uh, platinum gold members. Then they go on. And they're like, people with anxiety or any stresses, go on. Then it's that's people me. that really hate flying, go next. People that sort of hate flying. I'm like, I think I'm the last person to get on. <laughs> uh, and then I got on and stuffed me big rump into a little chair. And I go, uh, they say they're going to clean the plane. It's just one guy with Febreze. I go, <sniffs> anyway, so then I, uh, okay, bring him on. And then I go, I think there's a dog tooth in my uh, seat back. They go, we can't get every nook and cranny, narc. Why don't you yelp it down a notch, guy? I, okay. <laughs> Anyway, that's the story. I, you know, I think they just, they flatter all of us. I used to fly coach. You know, I didn't, I didn't have any, I didn't have any uh, pocket change, but now it's golden platinum, you know, five star members. And you're like, you're in the 40th row, but my God, you're walking on triple platinum, man. Yeah. But nobody doesn't have a great moniker. I got first on one of the ways and they go, there's a first class lounge. And I walk up, they go, are you a member? I go. Well, I'm flying first class. They go, what a joke. You can't come in here. You're not a member. Yeah. She said, pay downstairs. I went to one of those. She goes, pay downstairs, but there was no one there, like no one at the cash register. Yeah. So I went in, had a couple pops. Yeah, a couple And then knocks. snuck out. And, and saving that 70 bucks was just- Oh, I love it. Something about that. It's nice. Sneaking. The, one, the woman that wouldn't let me in says to her friend, as I'm leaving, I love you and grownups. I go, not enough. This is the time where you do me a solid and go, hey, Higgins, get in there. But also when I left the plane, I said this to her, because I'm a great guy. I said, listen, I want to thank you because, you know, you showed up. I said, a lot of people are calling in sick lately and planes are delayed, but I made my show and I appreciate it. And she goes, I know, right? I have COVID and I came in. And I go, exactly. That's what I mean. <laughs> you're trying and you're really doing. <clears throat> All right, Keenan, great guy. Kenan a lot of Thompson. fun with him. Yeah, The longest... Running cast active. member by far active. We go over his story. You know, he was a child actor mm -hmm. and then a child star on Nickelodeon. He doing was on a Hamburger Town. Show. He was on uh, um, Keel and Peel. He was on Peel and Keenan. <laughs> 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 well, look, we're not good with names, but uh, he no, was on he a was lot in... of stuff on Nickelodeon. Good Burger. Good Burger. Yeah. And he was in uh, Keenan and Kel. But Keenan. Um, has his own incredible story and it took him a long time to kind of get used to getting us now and being on SNL. And then he evolved and we go over how he got some great, I think Scared Straight is one of the hardest I've laughed at a sketch. Scared like Straight it. was great. He also does the, uh, what's up with that? Is that it? What's up with that, that is so funny. It's hard to describe this, but look it up on YouTube if yeah. you don't know it. And I will make, I'll make, I'll make an observation about Keenan. Yeah. He speaks, because I have a lot of Irish relatives. He speaks in poetry, and I hate this cliche, but he's kind of an old soul. He's a laid-back yeah. guy, and you always think of him as the kid, kind of, and he's still really young. <laughs> yeah, and he also is smart. We were asking who we thought who he thought would take over the show if Lauren ever left. Interesting answer. Um, and I asked him what it was like being famous at a young age, if that throws you off as a kid. A lot of child stars aren't a thousand percent stable, understandably. And uh, I think he's got his head on. Straight. He is a de facto producer in a sense that he, he's he been there, had mm -hmm. new people show up, go through their whole tenure, they leave and he's still there. And we ask him what that felt like, mm -hmm. but he's always likes when a new, a bunch comes in, because we've talked about it on the podcast, Some someone comes in as a single. And then this single? past year, they put four or five in. You know, and he likes to see them evolve. Likes to see clumps come in. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's easier for your brain to have a new person with you. I kind of came in with a chunk. It's hard to come in midstream, like by yourself, December, and then you're just fully lost in that place. Yeah. All right, you have a song. This is just a riff I thought of for Keenan. So, um, oh, let me get kind of a combo. Yeah, here. get comfortable. Get comfortable.
Toe Tapper. Keenan, Keenan Thompson coming to the show. Gonna be funny, don't, don't, don't you know? Keenan can't play the guitar when people are watching me. Yeah, you kind of. I'm twice as bad when people are watching me. David. <laughs> eh. We can fix that. <laughs> Sorry. I have five people staring at me with their jaws yeah. out, out like they're just. <laughs> no, it's fun. Okay, Is so. It? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it? I like Keenan. Thompson. All right, Keenan Thompson, guys. Hope you like. Keenan. Oh, whoa. Wow. Whoa. Not even a minute late. No. Hey, alum. Hey, alum. What's up, you're alums? Not you're not you're not, we're, you're, we're alums, you're not an alum yet, right? You're still on campus. Yeah, I know. I'm still <laughs> fully on campus. Yeah, the, once you leave ca- campus. Yeah. <laughs> all the campus meals are still free. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, gentlemen? Do you eat for, do Apologies you, wait. For, for missing oh, right. last time. My, my sleep schedule has just been crazy lately. Wait a minute. In today's busy world with all the emails and all this stuff, I, I recheck. I mean, I don't, I've, I, can't i'm never anywhere i'm not even sure i was supposed to be on this right now <laughs> until, until you just showed up well so, you're here no worries there Bro- are you, where are you it, broadcasting from the basement uh, this is uh, this is like uh undisclosed location in northern uh-huh. california uh-huh it's kind of a basement area it's that oh right yours does look like a basement are you okay <laughs> there's stuff in there that we should not be seen so <laughs> anyway it's a little haunted house place uh there's definitely poltergeist in this house built in 1912 but anyway back to you keenan <laughs> <laughs> hey keenan when you eat down there uh, on the show night mm-hmm. that's free right everything's still free or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is free um but you know you're also allowed to pay for whatever meal you would like so there's still freedoms there yeah, I would order in. Yeah. Do you give I'd order in? Danny. Do you yeah. give every season a, a a mental report card, like or a, a vibe card, like because you've been there with so, so, so <laughs> many casts and, and so many ups and downs and changes and people leaving that that was your favorite cast member. All this the normal drama. Yeah. So right now, what's your vibe card? Uh, right now, it's good. super strong, you know, like mm-hmm. we've been having a strong season. I think the new people all came in, you know, taking big swings together. You know, it's nice to see when they get to come in in groups as opposed to like one or twos trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? And being kind of lost for a couple of years or whatever and being in mm-hmm. the super duper background for a while, you know, they got to come <laughs> in uh, at a time when we pretty much needed them. You know what I mean? So they've all kind of been pretty prevalent, I think, this season as far as like getting introduced to America and stuff like that or whatever. But we talked a lot of to bridge cast members who came in and aren't really told anything because they're just alone no. and they're at the show and no one tells them, you know, where the bathroom is or what time is dinner. <laughs> it's like I bet Keenan tells them more than the higher ups. I would go to Keenan. Yeah. I try to tell them whatever they want to know because you know, I had that same experience. I was super like you said, nobody explains it to you. So like I showed up Tuesday at like 6 30 not knowing that i should have been there <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> early i was just like i don't i don't know i'll just go so when you I get, get hired up. and you just show up yeah and- nobody told me a, a time you know the times didn't come into play until like wednesday or some shit like that and you and were Monday. the only one coming in when you came in you were just added in as a single or were you had uh, anyone i came you? in with uh finesse and jb was writing and mm-hmm. jordan black was writing okay yeah. so Definitely you guys are the new ones. You know, Keenan, yeah. I did that when I came in. I did, you know, I do like coming in with a clump. I had a few people, you know, mm-hmm. we had, sort of had a chunk of people that are described from my era, mm-hmm. thank God. But when I came in, I remember Schneider uh, once, uh, Schneider and Downey called me on a Thursday night from a rewrite meeting and said, where the fuck are you? And I go, <laughs> well, I didn't get anything on. Right. And they go, you still got to be here. And I go, <laughs> 
Well, no one tells me anything. I go, that's like a 16 hour rewrite day, as you guys know. And I, I didn't go the full week before. No one said a word. And this is the second week I missed. And then they go, get down here. Down he goes, get down here. I go, oh, okay. I don't, I felt intrusive. Like if I went in, they'd say, well, right. why are you here? Did you think <laughs> you got you something on? I love I go, the, I love the mystery. It's SNL. weird. Did Lauren ever say to you, just as a non sequitur, still with the show? <laughs> Oh, you still can just here. Walk, yeah, still <laughs> here, but still with the show. It's like season four, and he walks by you. Oh, look who's, look who's still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get little asides like that. It, it's more so like right before you're about to perform a very personal sketch mm -hmm. that you're terrified about. You know, he's done this literally to me. He's like, you know, this should be funny, right? Okay, have fun. <laughs> it's like, shit, is this not been funny? <laughs> All That's, this time? It'd be really nice if it'd this nice like, if it was really good. was funny. Yeah. I know. His dry sense of humor, <laughs> but it does kind of relax you. It does. I like that. It's a Jedi That's, mind trick because then I go overperform, basically. What was that in your early tenure there? Where this, was there a sketch that you were particularly nervous about that like, if I land this, I'm going to break through in a different way. And then Lauren said something or what, when did you feel like you had a, a little bit of a, a foothold on SNL Mountain kind of was, or is it right away? No, it was not right away at all. It took a while. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get like my own personal ideas on till like, you know, fifth season kind of thing and on, you know, I was Ooh. servicing, wow. you know, writers and stuff like that and trying to be a good, you know, performance cast member. But my writing was really slacking, you know, cause I was kind of learning on the fly. I didn't have that responsibility at, you know, Nickelodeon. We were just kids, you know, and, I, I had, you know, good on camera presence or whatever. And that was enough to kind of skate me past not knowing how to write or have, knowing how to like collaborate with like full adults. You know what I'm saying? I was 25 and you know <laughs> there was like real adults in the room with like real consequence if I wasted their time kind of thing, you know? So it took a while to like feel comfortable, you know, asking people for their time or to take a swing on right. You know, an idea Very or true. whatever. Yeah. Did you yeah. find a, a confident or a writer or someone that you started to kind of talk to or vent to? Or Yeah, just Brian Tucker came in early, you know, like mm -hmm. we didn't, He's, you know, specifically write, you know, something that recurred necessarily. But we definitely mm -hmm. had a, a rapport very early because, you know, he loves the, the black zeitgeist. You know what I'm saying? So we get along. <laughs> and <laughs> me and Colin <laughs> shared an office for like eight years. So that was good times. Nice. So Brian, Brian, he became head writer or was he head writer when you came in? No, he, he, he graduated. And I think, you know, I, I had a hand in helping that with our little what's up with that venture. Fixing you time. Know what I mean? <laughs> what's up with that is a crusher, dude. I just watched a few of them and, uh, thank you, man, that's funny as shit. I, that's like an Silly. old school kind of just, I start laughing and it, you know, you don't really laugh at every sketch. Sometimes right. you look at a sketch and you go, that was good. Right. That was funny. But yeah. to start laughing and going, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, when when something is funny with the sound off or it's visual, you go in the song and there's, you've got Sudeikis does that thing. Mm -hmm. You're doing your thing. There's no real joke. It's a celebration and it's stopped. It, it's, it's what I would call an irresistible sketch. <laughs> 1,000. Like the only joke in it <laughs> is, the only joke. <laughs> my but favorite I love that by, by far is fucking Bill playing uh uh, Lindsay, Lindsay Buckingham. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and he just, he's, yeah. he's got so much to say in the beginning and we're going to get to it, I swear. And then we never yeah. do. And, you know, I always think he's mad at me and then he's not mad at me. It's my fucking favorite. It's and Bill best. Hader yeah. is just funny, you know, without lines. He's just fun. one of those yeah, guys. I'm one of the greatest, funny. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it, it's not easy to perform in silence. You know what I mean? You have to be a great mime, kind of yeah. acting like a Martin Short or something. What's not what's nice about an ensemble, uh, Dana knows this, is like Keenan, it takes a while to learn how to write a sketch. I think people realize that you there's no class for it. So you're really learning by watching and it takes a long time. But the the if you're a writer, you have the respect enough when you're there to be able to say, I have this sketch which pretty much services me, but I'm gonna have Mike Myers come in and do two lines. You get a guy yeah. like that. And he will come in and do his best two lines or understated or say, Dana, come in and do this. And they do it because it's an ensemble. And you go, what a gift. I get these great guys. 
and they are just pros walking, boom, boom. What do you need for the sketch? Play it under, play it over. What do you need for me? And I'll get out. And then that's that was sort of a, a power trip in a way too. You go, wow, I have all these guys at my disposal. And the same mm-hmm. thing you're saying is that you get to bring Bill Hader, who's so good, and you go, am I wasting this guy's time? But no, he comes Sudeikis in and gives doesn't his laughs. even talk. Sudeikis doesn't <laughs> say a word. He does the running man. And he's the, fucking, the biggest star of the sketch. Like, after yep. we rehearsed it the first time and he was sweating harder than I was, I was like, oh, this is going to be dynamite. You know what I'm saying? Because I could tell I was, I was my shoulders. Going. They are all, all you guys are moving so much. He's moving the most. <laughs> well, it's, it's just like a it's, fucking workout. It's not yeah. overtly like a funny dance. There's something about it. I couldn't really describe it's riding a bicycle. Yeah. It's yeah. just something. It's actually really good. Yes. And of course, he's playing it so serious. So yeah, that's another. I mean, yeah, they're it's like, like a technically yeah. black dancers that a white guy is doing very well, basically. Yeah, <laughs> so good. And he looks funny. <laughs> you know, I think funny. Zach was in one of them playing the two sided flute. Is that am I crazy? <laughs> yeah. My God, yes. Yeah, yeah Zach. <laughs> two sided flute. That's when it's just yeah. like, what more like ridiculous stuff can we do? And that was one of the harder things to do was finding something for the host to do that would stand mm-hmm. out. You know, so mm-hmm. like. That's one of the detriments of writing at SNL. You'll have this great idea that works for you and your friends. And then you're like, oh shit, like what does the host do in it? And if they don't have much to do in it, it might be on the chopping block, you know, like right. it's their night, you know, so they're not necessarily going to lean Lauren into Lauren also, Lauren, sorry to interrupt, but Lauren no, also yeah. drops those subtle, subtle notes, you know, maybe Fred Armisen is mm-hmm. the guy or, you know, <laughs> Mike could be, you know, he's kind of guiding the show that way but uh, it's always good to make friends with the host yeah or, or just get a relationship with them like how what are you feeling how are you doing what do you want what do that's you need? the that's the game you know that mm-hmm. and like of course you know satisfying the family like you were saying david like you have all these people at your disposal in the cast but you also have these brilliant makeup people brilliant wig people yeah. like mm-hmm. you know our technical crew is insane I don't know if y'all saw Pedro Pascal's episode, but they did a you know yes. Mario Kart thing that was insane. The graphics were crazy, crazy yes. good. And this is a twenty four hour, thirty hour fucking turnaround. It was it was it's just magical up there. So and they yeah, turned you, you into Kent Kendrick Perkins uh, recently. Yeah, whenever they want, <laughs> you know. Yeah, giant dude, Kendrick beer. was one of the funniest things I just <laughs> it's, saw. That, it's one of the uh, best impressions. <laughs> Of the last few years, there's something uh, so fucking funny about that thing. <laughs> Thank How you. I watch that, that show every day. Go and that, that shit feels like we did it a couple of years ago because, you know, it's weird when you have to do impressions before their household name. You know, like we tried mm-hmm. Steve Harvey before he was doing Family Feud and it just didn't work because, you mm-hmm. know, not enough people like knew what was funny about Steve Harvey, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Right. And then Kendrick Perkins was like, he wasn't big enough yet. Like, I guess he hadn't, you know, burned enough people yet to become famous <laughs> enough. Like, after that racist outburst, like, now everybody knows him. And now they're looking back at, like, an old impression. Like, oh, my God, it's magical. So there's so many ways to score and there's so many ways to get burned. And I don't know. It's just a it's a crazy job experience. Like, look who I'm talking to and, like, who I'm family with. You know what I mean? Like, this is it's such a blessed existence to be a part of. So, you know, a lot of the people who come on the show, I might be one of them, but you just, because it's, there's no other experience like it experientially and emotionally, you know, Rockefeller center, Laura Michaels, that eight H a lot of people kind of said, I'm not quite sure why I left. Maybe, maybe two more years would have been better or three Mm -hmm. more years. So are you the smartest guy in show business in a way? Like if this is tech kind of the, most intense things you can do on the planet and most overtly just created because you can think of something Thursday and it's on live TV. What, yeah. what, when did you, your forever plan when after, when did you kind of go? I think, I think I'll go with season seven. I'll go eight. How did it evolve? It's 20 seasons now, right? Or more. Yeah, this is 20. I mean, 20. it just kept rolling, you know, couple year deal after couple year deal. You know what I mean? Like it was never mm-hmm. more than two or three, like, all right. And then all of a sudden you're at the end of that three years, like, all right, should we extend? Like what else is going on or whatever? And it's like, there's other stuff going on, but it doesn't necessarily have to take time away from us. Like there's a way to do both. And it kind of just mm-hmm. kept working like that. It's like, that's right, like a new world. Cycle. Yeah. It was just mm-hmm. a, a new, you don't you know, have way to do it. You can go do a show. Exactly. And, and I was either or before. 
yeah, I wasn't the first one. You know, Fred like did a whole Portlandia run while he was still on the show. You know, and like that's right. You know, uh, eighty did the same thing with Shrill. Um, and and if you they know, let you, yeah, if they if they allow it, and now, the now scheduling they do, can work. I think. And yeah, I think it's a newer, you know, concept for people to allow for, you know, an actor to be in two places at once, basically. It's, on it's generous, and very also generous, if it's part of part of the Broadway video or the you're part of the show, even when you know Lauren is producing and you're, you know, it makes allowances for that. And Lauren, when I was there, was just starting with SNL Studios or his production company, so it's mm -hmm. kind of a whole big ecosystem. I just wanted to ask you about like. So you're there, you're, you're, you're doing really well. Someone comes in, stays seven years and leaves and you're still there. Like emotionally, you must get really attached to people because it does bond people yeah. so hard. And then uh, who was, uh, you, you probably a lot of people, who's like, you're sorry to see them go because you had so much fun with them. And then now, and then you meet the next person that you're going to love. So. I mean, all of them, you know, like in the beginning, like I, you know, Jeff Richard, uh, is not Jeff Richard, Jeff Goldblum. No, he <laughs> is <laughs> Jeff. I'm fucking blanking on his name. It might have been no. Jeff Richards is Tina's husband, right? No, yes. Jeff Richards yes. was a performer, right? Mm -hmm. So it was That's Jeff Richards, blonde hair kind of dude. Yeah, yeah, impressionist. Yeah. So Jeff Richards was there, and then he wasn't in my first season and I like, I and missed him. Wasn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know? And like, oh. just because we had like a backstage bond, he used to make me laugh and stuff like that, but he had a, a rough go at it. And like, you know, I even missed him, you know what I'm saying? In the beginning and it, it yeah. just never got easier. I think it was like Jimmy's last season or something too. So just like, I didn't necessarily build that strong of a friendship with him, but he was always nice. And then all of a sudden there was a, a, a it was a different show. You know, without, you know, a, mm -hmm. a Jimmy Fallon presence or whatever. That dude was like a rock star. And I was like, ah, man, yeah. you know, I, I wish Were I had more time. Were you on with us? With I can't remember. Yeah, I was there. You were, I, was, I wasn't on camera yet. <laughs> I, left in, I left in 93. Were you there? <laughs> yeah, I was still doing. Yeah, I was driving, actually. I drove you several nights, Dana. Yeah. I still remember. Uh, uh, but, yeah, it, it sucks every time, you know, because. You know, we're in the trenches together for so many hours, you know, so many different emotional experiences and stuff like that. And I've been lucky enough to, like, be, you know, in some cast with some very cool people, you know, so you just develop strong relationships. And then all of a sudden they're not there anymore. And it's, it's very sporadic when you see them again. I got a hard question, Dana. Who's his start? Who's his starting five from when you were on the show since you've been on the show? Well, Starting five. He probably had a, a few bit, but you did have, well, go ahead. For all time starting five, that's a lot of cast members. From 20 years. No, since he's been on. Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I just he's know that. Thinking. It might be all ladies because wow. I've, my sisters have been insane. You know, like Kate, Cecily, yeah. you know, Amy, Amy, Amy Maya, Tina, Maya, I, like mm -hmm. that's over, you know. Kristen. That's yeah, exactly like just with five is not fair. So if that's five are used up right away. It, it, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, like, it's just been some powerhouse performers. And I don't know, man, like it's such a great front row seat to the silly. I like I'm always laughing on camera or off camera. Like I can't take it seriously, especially 20 <laughs> years later. It's like it's not a job anymore. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't care what happens. What you do, which is is is, is uh, so enticing, is that you don't break, but you ha there's that sense of joy mm -hmm. underneath <laughs> everything in, on your face. Yes. And we are, where you're in some way, we're doing something crazy, you know. But to your point about the women, I I talked with Lauren about that because there were issues around oh. are the women get enough parts. Then the women in recent times started playing a lot of the men as well. Mm -hmm. Also being dominant mm -hmm. on that front. So <laughs> yeah. we definitely, it, it was a very light show that way. But the the women you've mentioned, yeah, are just absolutely brilliant. And then, of course, we all have our other favorites too. Bill Hader, yeah. who uh, you might be nice to hear, just we put him on the spot. You know, who's the greatest guy, you know, just because it's a fun game like the NBA, who's better? This And uh, Bill Hader yeah. said, Keenan. Keenan. That's wow. crazy. As the best yeah. cast member of all time. Yeah. So that, that's flat. 
That's insane. Well, that, he just said, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's insane. He just said, well, there's different ways of looking at this, but you know, you're, you're there. And it seems like, when did you meet peak relaxation? Cause it seems like it's been a while since I call it the comfort factor. I think Bo and Yang has it already. Mm -hmm. Like they come in, it's crunchy. It scores. If there's a cavalcade of people doing a, a thing landing if some shit crunchy i think you peak you was, landed yeah, yeah i think peak was around scared straight when i like you know had an idea that was coming mm -hmm. from me and was working on the show as far as you know intelligence yes. or you know are the jokes heady enough or new enough or not just for you know for black culture or whatever kind of just for everybody is it like broad enough and that one was like the first one where we really nailed it down. And thanks to Colin, man, because, you know, I brought the black side and he brought, you know, the structure side, <laughs> basically. Colin um, Jost. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like how me and Brian work, Brian Tucker. So I was going to bring that up because I do think that's another one of yours that just really pops off the television. Oh, thank because you. Because <laughs> you have the jokes and you're going, I don't know if people, for people who are just hearing about it, it's, it's, juvenile delinquents kind of getting scared by a, a hardened criminal, you know, verbally to make them not become criminals or something yes, like that. Using the plots and, of eighties movies. And within it, you're, <laughs> you're, you're so committed that on the air show with the adrenaline, like you're grabbing people and you're so in their face and they're tilting back. There's a sense of danger almost like, did anyone get hurt? Cause you really, I think their it's, eardrums were hurting for sure because like I yeah. was hollering and like I wanted to be like right close to where, you know, you could see my face and their face next to each other. So I would like circle around behind them. So I know I was yelling in their ears way and too much. And what would be but, like the 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 entree into that? You think you're cool. I mean, can you just do one of the lines, maybe even half speed, like when you first show up, it's like he, he like what when he, he first shows say, up is like on your feet. All right. Well, he says, all right, here it comes coming through the door. <laughs> all right, here it comes on your feet. <laughs> now sit down. <laughs> I said on your feet. <laughs> so and they're just innocent, just, scared guys. Yeah, just chaos from, from the jump. And shout out to Sudeikis once again, because another nothing ass role that he would just make a meal out of. Like at the end yeah. of the sketch, you know, he hops back up on the desk and like, you know, settles in or whatever and just made a meal out of being that kind of Keystone cop or whatever. Just fucking so much fun, man. And Because you're the knocking down all it, the... Sorry, brilliant. what? Yeah, I'm sorry, but to, to, to Sudeikis, you're knocking down all these boundaries and being inappropriate. And he's yes. like, hey, 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 yeah, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't take that. Really I'm, I'm, my bad, Chief. Show me where yeah, the line yeah. is at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, you what know, were you going to say? Uh, Dana, I have him... Fr I have this sketch up because I was watching before he came in and I have it freeze frame. And it's it's on you and Sudeikis, and Sudeikis looks like Phil, <laughs> Phil Hartman. Yeah. He's got his hair back, he's got glasses, he's got a mustache. I'm like, Sudeikis this is probably could, something Phil would have played. He can play the like the regular guy and make it so funny. Yeah, yeah. You know? He's like Phil that way. Yeah, yeah man. And we the had, good looking every man. <laughs> yeah, you guys laid out such an amazing template for us to follow: the everyday man, the impressionist, the voice, the quirk, the physical this so like by the time we got there you know we kind of knew if we could protest possess any of those talents and then someone else in the cast could be you know another person like that we knew we had like a full you know fledged kind of force basically because we were oh, covering interesting. all those aspects of society you know what i mean there is like you know a dad kind of a character there is a mm -hmm. you know game a show ball. Host. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's a guy that's like tearing the house down you know what i mean and there's a this that and the other and then of course there's women you know <laughs> women you know what always kind of i i sometimes have a sense of memory about when you you're doing the sketch all week and you have the practice show it's the air show and then the band's playing everyone's psyched up and you're going behind the slats and you got whatever your goofy thing is and then you might see bill Hader, or amy polar come over and they've got their goofy costume on and you're just all waiting to go on and do it for the live yeah. there's it that's kind of those bonding moments like you're you're scared you're excited but when you get into a rhythm with the cats and you've been through several incarnations it gets really fun everyone's getting very playful because the audience is loving the cast and everyone's getting more confident so there was nothing it. i enjoyed more than watching other cast members scoring, especially in their earlier years, 
Like mm-hmm. I remember when Kate used to do uh, Whiskers or We, and it was like always in that last <laughs> 10 minute window. So a lot of us would be done for the night and we could just like just sit and watch, and watch her just fucking destroy with the wildest, weirdest characters, you know, or concepts, you know, kind of ever. And it was just like, man, I'm so like, it's like a, being a proud parent, but like, or being a proud sibling, you know what I mean? It's like, look at my little sister out there scoring, you know, like mm-hmm. as, as big as anybody, you know, it was always really a lot of fun. So I like to to root for everybody on the team, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to get mine. Like I get mine, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. want them to get theirs. He was in f- roughly 1,500 sketches. What are your favorite 200? <laughs> Um, <laughs> which, which, uh, uh, any alien you have 10 seconds all the, <laughs> any alien all the is aliens were always a lot of fun to play mm-hmm. <laughs> just because it's like impressive how they can throw an alien head on you in like three minutes or seven minutes whatever it is it's never super long and then it comes right off and you can go be somebody else um, but yeah I don't know man Saying live from New York the first time was fucking exhilarating, mm-hmm. you know, and sure. it's been exhilarating each time after, you know, it's just get the party started, but also recognize where you are. You know what I'm saying? You just said live from New York is Saturday night and people are clapping and now the show is happening and like all these cameras are dancing and like that fucking famous person has been behind that wall for four minutes waiting for their moment. You yeah. Know I mean? Yeah. They're listening to you. Too. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. They're waiting you, for their cue. Yeah. Fuck, I used to see it. I didn't say it, I don't think, until I came back and hosted, but I remember saying it going, this is what Chevy Chase said. This is like when you were a kid going, live from New York. And sometimes they'd yell it. Sometimes they'd just say it. Yeah. But it's turned into sort of a yelling, exciting thing to get out there. Because like, here we go. 1,000%. Yeah. It's iconic. Yeah, that's the the, the host part of it. Um I know you can't say ah favorite host, but a host that pops to mind uh, for you. I mean, for me, Fun it, was, host. it was Charlton Heston or, you know, these yeah, a- like asymmetrical Hanks, people. I always say like Hanks and Chappelle, you know, those are two guys that usually come in and like have really, really big shows, you know, as yeah. far as like the behind the scenes people that show up to kind of want to witness the night, you know, like people hear like, oh, yeah, oh Dave Chappelle. For those big yeah, ones, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, and Hanks was like that in the '80s or early '90s when he even back with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, he came the, in with yeah the nicest guy in the world, but like a fucking strong, strong, strong artist. You know, like real meticulous, like damn near method. Um, as far as like his approach to comedy, even you know, like comedy should be very specific, and it's like it's supposed to be this rhythm and this reference is supposed to. You know what I mean? And he's always like fishing and trying to keep that old you know, world of like us ad-libbing 24 hours a day to find funny moments and plug them in or not, but just to kind of like push through the day, you know, entertaining each other. And that that feels very like old school, you know what I mean? Like the new kids are just in their phones, basically. Everybody's like, as soon as we're done, you know, we take a break <laughs> from rehearsal, everybody picks their phones up. <laughs> well, Tom, Tom Hanks has no movie star ego at all. And it's he, crazy. He loves coming into SNL and being part of an ensemble. And he, uh, Mr. Short-Term Memory was one of his iconic sketches. Oh, right, right. He's probably the only one who could land it because it yeah. was about commitment. You mm-hmm. know, Will Ferrell, there's there's certain commitment freaks, but yeah. he's he's up there. And uh, yeah, I'm. He, he was always fun. And I told him, I, I said, I felt we had a new, another cast member coming, mm-hmm. not not necessarily a host when he was around. You know, yeah. Just his whole vibe. You know. And it's great when cast members host the show. It's like a week off for us. Because mm-hmm. they know the whole drill. Yep. Yeah, it's funny because you go, when they leave and come back, you're like, it's like an all-cast show. It is. It's the best. It's the best week ever. It's like, there was, there's no egos. I was telling Dana, yeah. there was times when we were having a run of hosts that weren't quite as famous, like it's the second lead from a TV show or the third lead. And I was like looking around the room going, I think Mike and Dana are more famous than <laughs> for a beat, <laughs> for yeah. a run there. It's like everyone was, there was some people getting very famous on the show and you thought, oh my God, the host must feel crazy coming in here. Sometimes they just sit down and go, mm-hmm. I want to do Wayne's World. And you go, oh, okay. <laughs> do, do you have a starstruck host for you at all? Um, or, like or, struck by me? Um, no, that you would go a little starstruck like. That know, I was starstruck? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Eddie was crazy. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, Eddie that, that would That was be. just crazy. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Sandler was like that too. You know, I'm 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 always enamored by that guy. Like even when we're like shooting movies or whatever, and like, it feels like I should be more comfortable because it's not my first time around him. But I'm just a, such a fan, you know. And it's the same with you guys. You know what I mean? Like it's it's off putting, you know, for you guys to like really be in people's presence because it's like, you know, we we hold you in such high regard and you bring us so much joy. It's like oh shit, now this person is like in front of me. What do I say to them? Like I hope I'm not wasting their time. <laughs> or I hope I can make them laugh. You know what I mean? Because like if you talk to Seinfeld, he doesn't want to like talk. He wants to like be entertained. You know what I mean? Like he wants to find <laughs> he wants to find jokes. You know what I mean? So he's like, he's oh, always man. on a joke hunt. <laughs> a thousand percent. So he's like, he's let me not worker. waste his time. I and like it. Yeah. It's the same for you guys. Like that 40th was crazy, just like watching people, you know, come in in different interims yeah, and like do yeah. their bits and shit. But these are all people that I you, I just grew up, you know, idolizing or whatever, but never feeling like I would ever meet or, you know, be bros with or alumni or any of that. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's a lot to take in. So I understand what it is for, the, you know, the general public to like bump into you guys and not know what to say. It's like, holy shit. Like, what would I do? Let me get, just get a picture or, you know, give me a big punch. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I always tell people ask me, what should I say to a celebrity? And I said, be very, very specific. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, they, if they ran into you, they go, I love and scared straight when you and Sudeikis have that little powwow after yeah, you yeah, yeah. on the guys. And then you're like, oh, that's a real fan. Yeah. But you're, you're a thousand percent in the club. You know, you're not only just on Saturday Night Live. Now everyone, you know, you have these sketches that are, you know, Part, part of our history. But I had the same yeah. thing with Dan Aykroyd. I was copying his impression with a little tape recorder to do Jimmy Carter in college. And then mm -hmm. I walk into Lauren's office. I don't know if it's ever happened to you. And there's Dan Aykroyd. I didn't yeah. know what to say to him. At all. I it's said, too much. I, yeah. Have you had a celebrity? I, I walked in there once and Mick Jagger was sitting there. Lauren never gives you Ooh, a warning. <laughs> Did no you have warning. walk into Lauren? <laughs> Lauren's office and have somebody famous sitting there or a cast member or just yeah I want to say it was like McCartney in there one time or somebody like that it's <laughs> like Jesus Christ like this you're is not fucking, ready no what am I gonna say I to love a all, I love all what's up yeah. that you know because he keeps dancing and singing yeah. he never really thing. interviews the people yeah he never the says people, a word they want to talk but they never get to talk as good <laughs> it's like oh my god please Did stop you talking notice? to me I don't know what to do was it poor writing they never talk yeah <laughs> And the dancing man, you know, with the bicycle guy. What's yeah. he all about? And the three yeah, piece Paul. suit and everything. It's just a long suit. It looks great. <laughs> one, one time, Dana, Lauren called me out of the blue, which why would Nor Lauren call me? But I was on the show and it was toward the end of my run. I love Lauren. And he goes, David, uh, <laughs> you're good on your feet. Do you think you could think of jokes uh, if Mick Jagger won something and he has to think of things to say? And I'm like, I don't know, Warchor or something. He goes, hang on. And he goes, hello? And I go, he puts Mick Jagger. I don't even, I'm not even getting my head around what the, what's going on. And then I go, Oh, Hey. And then yeah. he goes, he's like, basically like, go. I'm like, yeah, go what? Give me, give you my <laughs> jokes. I don't, haven't thought of yet. It's too much pressure. He did match me one time when we were doing a what's up with that. And like a guest dropped out. <laughs> so like the second seat is usually just someone that really just sits there and doesn't say anything at all. Yeah. And it's like reserved for any kind of famous person that wants to be there or the that we show. can get. Yeah. And then like that person dropped out. So like Robin Williams was just around and he was like, you should ask Robin. I was like, I should ask Robin. <laughs> like, I, I, I should go ask Robin Williams to just sit Robin in my sketch Williams. and not say a word. Like Jesus. Seriously. And he was like, yeah. I was like, shit. And, and Robin would have been cool with it. <laughs> yeah, no, I went and yeah. talked. I didn't even finish my sentence. He was just like, absolutely, like, whatever. You of know course. what I mean? Like, a, he was yeah. just an anger. Her. So, yeah. yeah, that was crazy. Yesterday, my, my brush with fame yesterday, Dana, was a guy, uh, when I'm walking around, goes, uh, he comes up behind me, hey, and I see him chase, running up with his camera. And he goes, are, are, are you David Bowie? And I go, yes. And then he goes, okay. <laughs> And then I go, go tell everyone you met David Bowie. But he he knew me. Why this guy was like 23 and even knew who David Bowie was to say the wrong name. But there, it was kind of funny. It's funny. Uh, bless well, I, him. Don't even correct him. Just David, go. I used to, you used to sign autographs as me when we yes. looked young, more okay. close sure. in age in my boyish stage. Uh, that's Lauren always says it. I, I, I never went boyish. Boyish, boyish, uh, boyish. But uh, and then I would sign autographs for a period of time as David, 
And now why they not? Just, just kid it. Now quicker, they just, just come boom. up and say to me, "You're you're no David Spade," and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Mar- that's Marcy Klein. <laughs> you guys ever like bump back into people that you did that to? Oh, that they realize. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. But they don't even know they're saying it when they say it sometimes. They just think they're saying the right thing. Right. So they don't even know they did anything wrong. Yeah. Hey, were you there for Margot Robbie when she hosted? Yeah, she was so nice. We did this sketch that Bobby wrote, Bobby Moynihan, shout out. Um and it was like you know that that song bow bow yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh one? i love that love oh was yeah. it was so she a teacher she, yeah she's like the hot I saw that. And, and then she just kept taking that. layers <laughs> off and just getting yeah. like grosser and grosser yeah that was a lot of fun when i was watching this day and i'm thinking okay first of all margot robbie seems like a really good uh you know fun good spirited person that would go along with whatever mm-hmm. and yeah. when you go on that show of course, it's better if you just say, sure, let me try this. But, you know, being pretty. And then I go, oh, they're may- she's just like a stripping hot teacher that you dream would strip. <laughs> yeah. And so she starts stripping. And I'm like, I'm kind of weird out she would do this, you know. Right. But, of course, the joke comes in where she starts, she lets her hair down. And then she starts pulling out the extensions. And then she's basically, <laughs> has a, she's bald with like little strings of hair. And then uh, it just gets worse. And uh, yeah. the guys go from being excited to going, oh, oh gross. It's all like kind of slow motion. Yeah. Like, and please they're stop. All, uh, yeah, slowly turned off by her. Uh, very fun. I, I like to see when a big star, like she's a pretty big star. And to come she's in. and a huge oh, yes. star. Yeah. She's to a come huge in and, like, do star. It. And it yeah. took a while. Like that was not a quick shoot. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's a bald cap on, which is already Dana exactly. used to wear them all week just to get ready for Saturday. But uh, <laughs> sometimes I had them on so much I would keep keep it on. I keep it on the whole week. I had a wig for my own hair, That's so I didn't hilarious. have to get one on Saturday. Yeah, I just kept it all week. Dana, you could have it taken off and put it on again. No, Lauren, it's so fucking painful with the pins and the glue. Uh, do they do it, Keenan? Like if you anybody does a bald cap, do they or a host? Let's say it's it used to take about forty five minutes. So. If they do it after dress, do they take it off to make their hair nice for the monologue or they just put their own hair as a wig on? The host, I yeah. feel like the host would they'll usually take it off. Shit. So they'll have God, their natural work. Shit. It's a lot of work on those makeup guys. Like fucking you're nervous and you're and sitting in a chair with the energy going, fuck, I want to get out of here. I want to go over my lines. And they're like, yeah. just sit tight. Scrubbing Ugh. on your forehead scrubbing the glue off and ripping uh, your hair out and you're like motherfucker it's sophisticated because you can do it on a movie yeah it's grinding and glue and pins how's it feel you yeah. just say fine it's fine it's any fine. pain no it's all right let's just not go gonna do, this. do it <laughs> work let's for that. just go do this let me bore keenan with one more sketch uh Passing out on the slingshot. I think I was right before we were going to talk to you last. It was the night before. It was maybe Woody Harrelson. Uh huh. Yeah. Was it that you? Was what was that one? That was yeah. That was me and Woody. I think yeah. That was Woody Harrelson. Was that Woody Harrelson? I think yes. so. Yes, it was. Yeah. That was. And fun. was it you was excited to go on this? It was very physical. Very. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh come on, you guys, we got to ride the slingshot. You can't back out now. You know, don't look like a like a. Scaredy cat in front of your girlfriend. <laughs> like all that typical <laughs> old, dumb, misogynistic kind of tone. Like, come on, you know, the fellas will handle this kind of thing or whatever. But yeah, it was just an homage to all those slingshot videos because. And what happened? You black out right away, right? Yeah, it's usually the guy that's like excited about it that huffs and puffs too much in the beginning and it just <laughs> passes out. Yeah. Because <laughs> all I kept thinking is, how do you see the cue cards? Because you're. You got yeah, close your eyes. My, you... my squint game was on. Was, <laughs> your squint oh, game was squint good. Game. You look yeah. like your eyes are closed to be reading the cards. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. Like, uh... And then, like, when it was time to talk, like, I could, I was awake, so I could, like, actually look, but I was squinting to see the the monitor so I could tell, like, when, when it was do you time wake to, up like, again? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I'm, like, bouncing up and down, if that's matching or whatever kind of thing. Can we, uh, here's a little uh, side thing. Uh, you're singing on the show. Mm -hmm. And your collaborations with Chris Redd, who I was doing a couple Laugh Factories with, just knew him very casually. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know he was trying for SNL. And also, suddenly he's on SNL. But it seems like you guys had 
I was boys to men uh, come back Barack. You had some great songs. Mm -hmm. Did you sing from the beginning or because I can't sing at all? I can fake sing. You seem like you can sing. No, I was, you know, a musical theater (laughs) kid necessarily. So I I sing with others, you know, a lot Mm -hmm. more or a lot better than I would say I sing by myself. But, you know. For some Mm -hmm. reason, like I involved myself in the warm up even. So like I have to sing a warm up song before the the shows. But besides that, like, yeah, no, I'm more of a sing for the sketch as opposed to like, you know, I got a single coming out. (laughs) Like joke, like joke singing kind of. Yeah. When the audience is sitting there waiting for the show, sometimes I stand up or, you know, what Dennis Miller would tell jokes. So Mm -hmm. what what song do you sing generally? Obviously, it's upbeat or I'm just curious. (laughs) Yeah, here um, comes Kim. the show. Will be on in ten minutes. Uh, we sing a change is gonna come. <laughs> no, How's I'm that just go? <laughs> <laughs> You know that song. I was born by the river in a little tent. Very sad song. Like I think it's Malcolm X is him going to his death mm-hmm. <laughs> was the song that they chose in that movie. So no, we sing. Uh, it was give me some loving for a long time, but now it's just like other like Teddy mm-hmm. Pendergrass song. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that super upbeat yeah it's very upbeat and michael chase starts it off with some jokes and then introduces us and i go up there with you know heidi ego and chloe now but it's always been (laughs) the version of lady cast members to sing Uh, with me yeah that's before before the show before the show yeah so you've already got them on your side you know i think me and norm used to try to break that ice yeah Mm -hmm. i like your i like your idea better i i didn't want to be seen in the crowd before i went up but uh I'd go up there and Marcy would come pound on my door and go, Lauren wants you to go up, do some stand up, go. And I'm like, it's a little trickier than that. <laughs> they I never gave you a warning, David. They never gave you a warning. Go now. <laughs> go. Or you are you going to play get a fired? Martian? Uh, put the wig on and get on the fucking stage. And yeah. <laughs> and would you do it or would you push back? Fuck, I never pushed back once. Yeah, I, uh, just jump uh, out there. I'm the biggest just pussy go. in America. Yeah, I went out there and then I do it. And Lauren's like, can we count that as a sketch? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you were in one thing. Like, no, it was before the show started. Do you yeah. do a Lauren impression? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> Almost does. A, everyone uh, yeah. in this oral history of Saturday Night Live. Even Only because Lauren I've has never an met anyone him, so. like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, no one has. <laughs> and I was, I'd seen Austin Powers a million times before I actually got the job. So then I mm-hmm. went there and I'm like, so wait, he's not admitting <laughs> that this is that? Because this is totally that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a new sketch. This yeah. is that. This, this is, is totally <laughs> that. This is totally that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, um, did you have any Lorne-isms? We sometimes collect, you know, things that he says to people. You know, uh, the the initial one was never, never, um, never underestimate the value of water is a kind of a, a touchstone for a lot of people. Yeah. And he also <laughs> like has a way of like summing up large occurrences in, in the world. It's like, cause, yeah, because, you know, Elvis was a twin. So it's that. It was like, what, what, uh, what is that? What does that mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, Hitler was, was a painter. His yeah. Hitler was a painter. And so yeah, it's and, all that. So it's, it's that. <laughs> World yeah. War II? <laughs> I never know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, know what, I don't know what you mean. You're Who should up take whatever. over for Lauren? Uh, Keenan, yeah. do you have any ideas? Any, who's good enough to handle that job? Higgins. Hands down, Higgins. Higgins. You know what I mean? Like, I have him on a list here. Steve Higgins. Yeah. I mean, Higgins is a no brainer. Um, but, Eric Kenward is out there, you know, like Aaron Doyle, you know, the people that have been there for a, a longer period of time, I think. Colin, you know, myself, I don't know, Che, like we can all handle it. Like if we all wanted to stick Would you around entertain and keep it going. It if they if they approach you? Oh, yeah. Like why not? It'll keep me in New York. It'll keep me, you know, in a stable environment which is hard for an actor i'm just gonna write write your name down for a second i'm just keeping it write so it loose. down put it in the universe Thanks that's for great i i think you Use a um uh we don't yeah. have pens i don't have any, i'm disorganized <laughs> seth myers and tina fey as a, yeah all of them you know what i mean yeah. like they, anybody that's especially been a person with a pencil in their back pocket for a week you know just yeah. fishing for jokes and like knows the structure of the show so seth Tina, any one of them, I think, you know, that have had a good run at it and enjoy it, they they can get it, you know. Well, I'm you're just, interesting because you're 20 years. You know every in and out. You know what's going on. If you just perked your ears up to, like, budgets and stuff, you could figure yeah. it out. 
pretty and the, but there's also like the other element where Lauren is such a rock star and he has so many like you know pick up the phone favor kind of you know mm-hmm. moments that he can make deals happen with for the, the show with the, the network or the studio just deals yeah. with them yeah know, and keeps them away from us you know keeps us protected like he's just an mm-hmm. og so yeah. someone that can continue that kind of thing and like make it a safe space for us and then also make a phone call and get a legend in there at the last minute if it if it needs to to be that yes there's a lot of off-label things that he's doing that go beyond executive producer and i think he does mm-hmm. always develop a fondness for his cast members you can feel it you know mm-hmm. i mean he's talked very nicely about you almost in a paternal way with other mm-hmm. cast members he becomes the de facto dad that no one ever had or something even though i'm three years older than him he's still kind of my dad no. that, yeah <laughs> he, that's so crazy yeah but that uh, must be a crazy dynamic because yeah he's the one we all kind of turn to because if he's not happy, like you know, the shit's not getting on. You know what I'm saying? Like if he's not fucking with it, then that's that's the end all be all. So I've gone to him for a lot of different, you know, nothing pertaining to the show kind of advice because he just gives that air basically. With like, you yeah. know, if you have a question or you know if you have a situation, we can help you with it. You know, nothing's too, you know, Go ahead. too terrible that we can't fix it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And my, when I was sort of, uh, you call it wilderness years or raising a family, whatever you want to call it. But then I ran into Lauren. He, he's just like, he said, um, everyone knows who you are. <laughs> you know, it's just Lauren in a very mm-hmm. supportive little like, you know, whenever you're ready, you just can do it some more. Um, but yeah, he's brilliant at those kind of um, just been there, seen it all. And then he was like a stepdad to me because he used to ground me and hit me. Okay. You want to talk, that actually you was talk Jim further Downey. about that hitting part? <laughs> no, a lot of people did. Um, <laughs> Let's break some news. We got a trend. A re- we got I a trend, a man. Handful. <laughs> <laughs> you were at like the spoiled child. David's like a little boy and we, you have to take care of him. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, will you bounce him on your knee? David need a spanky. <laughs> David, David, he need a little spanky and he's in a timeout. Don't uh, talk to him. I'm not going to use any sort of object or 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 uh, spatula. I'm going to go full hand. <laughs> yeah. But it'll He's be just on the bottom. Skin on skin. <laughs> That's good for Lord. Skin on skin. <laughs> I have a question about when you were on Nickelodeon. Is is being a Nickelodeon like a is it like kind of a little bit of a rock star because is it a different kind of fame, right? Is it harder is it hard to handle when you're younger and a lot of people know you? No. I mean I don't Nickelodeon wasn't as popular as it is now, I don't think, back in those days. So we were damn near off the network before we were, you know, super duper popular from it because it was cable and you had to have cable, you know what I'm saying? To even watch the shows type thing. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it wasn't like a bunch of kids that were able to like just request what's on their cable bill every month. So Nickelodeon was still kind of breaking out. And then while we were there, it built into this, you know, kind of worldly thing because they started putting channels in like all these different countries and stuff like that. So that took a while for it to grow. And then by the time we were like in our mid twenties, we were like pretty famous from it, but the work was four or five or six years old at least. Oh, I see. Just for people who don't know who are listening, just so we can just touch on it for a second, because no one ever knows everything. You think everybody knows that you were an actor uh, my, as, yes, as my name is Keenan man. Thompson. And, and you <laughs> first, uh, your social security number is 4534. Yeah, from but, full Atlanta, Georgia. Um, what, how old yeah, were you when on, you first performed on television? On television, to, to I did my first commercial, I guess, at 12-ish, but I, didn't, mm-hmm. I never saw it. But it was pretty awesome. It was for a fried chicken restaurant. I'm very proud of that. Do you remember your line? <laughs> yes, it's I do. It's delicious. <laughs> Damn near close. So I was really? fishing. I was fishing with my granddad, fishing. and I say, <laughs> "Grandpa, the fish ain't biting today." And he handed me a piece of chicken, and I bite it, and I say, mm, "I like this kind of biting." Oh, <laughs> Come on, <laughs> who wrote that? Fucking, <laughs> fucking classic. Keenan is putting his hand, yeah <laughs> fingers chef's to his kiss. mouth in the mm, chef's kiss. That is a classic. It, that piece says on a research. Right Keenan, it says on a research. He was, <laughs> you, you were a fan of The Price is Right, 
Yes. What you called your first love, and it shaped your acting style. What kind yeah, of now, acting is yeah, going nice. on? I have that right. down too. Now, come on, Ten what's People up? are taking some serious liberties there. <laughs> I just said I like the show. I didn't say anything about it shaping You're, my. There's no and acting. And it has shaped your entire life. <laughs> your no, acting style, like oh boy, it started my obsession with the television. Is what oh, it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, for so sure. Colorful. I used to glue, glue yeah. that shit. Yeah, and. I was having sons that were walking, watching Nickelodeon in the 90s. So you were famous to mm-hmm. them. I'd heard about you before then, SNL. Keenan and mm-hmm. Kel, I think, was one of the shows you did. That's right. Keenan and Kel se- and all the that was the other one. And, and all that. And so yeah. you're doing sketch comedy on Nickelodeon mm-hmm. like a, before you do sketch comedy on Saturday Night Live. So you, you have a unique path. <laughs> very unique and very, like, you know, kismet. We, because we would say we're like, oh yeah, we're the Saturday Night Live for kids or whatever, but we never thought any of us would actually make it to Go an audition. The real one. Yeah, like that shit was like in New York. We were in Florida and never thought about like how we would ever like, you know, let's let's go pack it all up and move to New York in hopes for a chance at the at the shot at the audition for Saturday Night Live. It was like, no, if it not even a chance. ever were to come up, you know what I mean? That would be a miracle. So. Yeah, I, it's I just never big, thought it's too far away. It's too big. Of yeah, a it's away. just it's too mm-hmm. too famous, too infamous. You know, like it's just one of those things that's existing in the background of your life that you never think you'll be a part of. Like it was hard for me to associate myself with it being the same show for years. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I, I don't. Is this is this like another world or like another dimension or something? Like is this bizarro? Saturday Night Live. Do you remember or, the first time you walked into 8H wh- wh- on like yeah, a Thursday? It's empty. Yeah. You oh you had, what was your audition like? Horrible. Um I had to do <laughs> okay. I had to do stand up for the first time um because it was like cattle call all the black guys and a lot of you know black comics <laughs> are mostly stand ups. Because you know, Tracy oh, yeah. and you know Jerry had left. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, you know, time for some newbies. And uh yeah, the 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 pool of, you know, black comedians are, you know, mostly stand ups pretty much like and at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I was I had to do stand up. You know, I didn't I didn't know that I could like opt out of that or whatever. Like being yeah. like, no, I'm an improv or whatever. I was just like an actor. So I was like, all right, I'll do what everybody else is doing. And, you know, it was my first time doing stand up. So it was awful. Jeez. I had to come up with five minutes. And I didn't know how to like talk to the crowd at all. Very I just tough. like started with a fucking ringing telephone and went into impressions and shit. So it didn't go over well at all, <laughs> but <laughs> it was fine because I got the call back and that was on the stage, which was much more comfortable because it was just, you know, to the camera basically. So it reminded me of like playing in my room to myself kind of thing. You know what I mean? So that mm-hmm. was much more comfortable for me and, you know, what I was used to being on Nickelodeon and stuff, but yeah, that that call back was when I first walked into 8H and I remember like walking underneath the, you know, the bleachers and just mm-hmm. seeing all the wiring and the structure of it all and like the bare bones of the studio, yeah. basically, you know, scary, very <laughs> scary because it's like, oh, it's way smaller than smaller I imagined. Smaller is what I thought too, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. way smaller and like, how did they do all this shit in here? Because there was nothing and there was no sets. There was no, like, the. I don't think the music stage was even, nothing you know, set that. for that season yet or something. So it was just like a blank studio. So I was like, oh. And it's, yeah, it's not sparkly, you know. It's, nope. it's not like it's, a modern. It's, it's it was nitty gritty. So I was like, yeah. okay, cool. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. So, well, I know about your resume and now you're branching out. I was just uh, fascinated by your per, your company, Spreading Artists for Artists. Yeah, Smart. shout out. Yeah, shout so out to my when, partner, Johnny Ryan. When yeah. did that start? Your own, it's a it's a management company, production company, or kind of a it's combo? A, it's a mothership of a lot of different things, but yeah, it's mm-hmm. a production company. Um, but mm-hmm. also like, you know, we want to be able to like be the bank eventually, you know what I'm saying? And fund a lot of different projects or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, my partner's been producing for 20, 30 years, and I've been doing what I've been doing for 20, 30 years. So we met each other 20 ish years ago and then reconnected like four ish kind of years ago. I'm like, all right, so where are we both at with this whole, you know, career as far as like working with others is concerned and what we really want out of life? And, you know, he became like a free agent right around when I became like a free agent ish, you know, because I've had another production company, but 
you know, it was kind of living in its own kind of, I don't know, altitude, like it was kind of peaking basically without breaking through the ceiling kind of thing. So it's mm-hmm. like, maybe start something fresh, you know, and, you know, since I'm starting it with somebody who has such a great background in it, you know, kind of let him run with it. If it's just going to be me and him running a company together, like that's a, you know, very like exciting thing because I know the communication will be there. You know what I'm saying? Cause we're friends and we hang out all the time, you know what I mean? And to like build something where you need to be checking in with somebody on a daily basis, why not do it with like a friend, but also a friend that knows what the fuck they're doing kind of thing. So it just, it's a layered kind of a company, you know what I mean? And it's just a really cool kind of venture. So I'm excited to see what it does. I saw, not to interrupt, but uh, Mike Tyson, you, you're mm-hmm. doing something with him. And what what are you doing with Mike Tyson? Uh, he's one of our uh, investor, like early investors. He's like one of our partners, I think, but mm-hmm. also like whatever he wants to do, you know, he's a, you know, kind of like friend of the family basically at this point. And, uh, you know, my partner was producing his podcast and a couple other things with him. He produced his fight, the last fight with Roy Jones, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. yeah. he did that in the middle of COVID, like kind of by himself, you know, with a small team. And, you know, so he's, you know, he's a prolific producer. Like he knows sure. so many different people. He's been doing it for so long and still under the radar. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, this is time to like, bo- both of us kind of, you know, jump into the next I don't know milestone search of our lives or yeah, you know career smart goals. to think that yeah. way. I think it's I think it's great. You're yeah. you're still really young and you can build that as big as you want to build it. It's just one Thank one you. step at a time. Yeah. So if you guys got projects, you guys got projects. You know what I'm saying? Or like, how about your boy? How about your I, uh, boy? I have a few. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Uh, you can make deals with Keenan. He likes to make deals. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Make, make the deal with Keenan. He'll handle it. <laughs> well, thanks, Lauren. You know, I appreciate I it. I gotta say, Dana, that Keenan comes off as pretty uh uh together guy and uh for in a business of being famous for so long. But maybe mm-hmm. do you think it helped that your fame, like you were saying about Nickelodeon, was a little more gradual and not overnight, so you could sort of absorb it yearly and take Absolutely. it in mind. Mine was a little like that where it just took so long that by the time I got sort of well known, I was like, Yeah. It wasn't overnight. Like Jim Carrey, that stuff would would throw you off, throw me off. It would because there's too many things happening at once. You know what I yes. mean? It's like all of a sudden you have, you know, all the attention in the world that maybe you didn't have. You're getting like attention from certain, you know, people or, you know, sexes. You know what I'm of saying? Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, what, 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 do you mean, what do you mean by that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. the ladies are starting to look at you a certain way. Whatever. Um your finances are all like skyrocketing and shit. You know what I mean? So the friends are different. Like when it's so quick, everyone gets weird. You just have carte blanche kind of to, to everything your, your heart could ever desire. And, you know, and a lot of people that have handled that well, you know what I mean? No matter who they are, they they go through their ups and downs and they bump their heads and blah, blah, blah. And you can't imagine it doesn't stay up here. I would, I I use the example. You can't see the bottom. Yeah. Of like friends, the TV show, like I I Mm -hmm. know some of them and they're, they're pretty cool people because if if the first thing you do is that sky high, I, yeah. I don't think it's in your head to realize it can go down or anything you do after that will be just as big. It's just impossible. Yeah. So everything feels like a little bit of a, 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 a of a nick, you know, like it just can't be all great. Maybe that's a bad example, but you know what I mean. So if you're out there, you do something, then you do something that doesn't really work. Then you get a little better, then you do something... Then you start mm-hmm. to realize, oh, I'm really lucky where I am, or I'm really lucky that something worked. Appreciate mm-hmm. it more and try to keep your head screwed on straight, which is almost impossible. It really is. And the younger, the worse, I feel like. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if you like, not Definitely. to harp on Pete, but like, Pete is a perfect example. He's a great kid. You know what I mean? But he had it all dumped on him at 19. And he just fucked around and happened to be good. You know what I'm saying? So that's what really adds, you know, fuel to the fire. You know, like right. when you have all these things that, you know, people want to clamor onto and you have the talent to back it up as well. It's just like, all right, fucking, you know, the world is your smorgasbord. Like have whatever you want, this kind of thing or whatever. And we've literally had to watch him grow up through that and, you know, come out on the other side, you know, thankfully still intact, you know, with his family being close to him and stuff like that. And you know, good friends, but it, 
it looked like a fucking nightmare. You know what I mean? Because it looked like such a whirlwind of everything happening all at once. And you think it's all good and then certain bad things happen. But, you know, you just keep going because, you know, the industry keeps pushing you along through whatever. But unfortunately, yeah. these are the times where everybody knows everything about everybody. So we've like had to, you know, watch directly or indirectly, you know, our our little brother like fall down and scrape his knees and get back up, you know what I mean? And heal himself and, you know, keep trying to keep ahead on. Yeah, a lot straight, of eyes. Basically. Yeah. A lot of, in a world where there's just a lot of eyes on every thing. And also and stay so, inspired, so no you know what I mean? With so much shit talking out there, you know what I mean? And like to still want to create things that people might talk shit about is, you know, very brave, you know, so I give him his credit. You know, we just saw him this weekend. He did a, he did a good job, Dana. We just did this Mark Twain thing and he yeah, came nice. in. He did a, he had some good jokes there. So that, you know, it's tough. I mean, I would rather, if I was in his position, wish eyes were off me let things settle for a second just because mm -hmm. it's it's too much for too long where you go you can't make a move everyone's got an opinion it's just a tough situation yeah it's a lot of good in it but it just can be tough well yeah we had a bulletin board this is uh old timey stuff you know <laughs> with like five or six handwritten or hand typed letters and that was our only mm -hmm. interaction there was yeah. no you know anything yeah. and, and some of them said we suck but i do think for a lot of the people that i know who are very talented there's the fame the money the power the glory whatever the private jet all of it and then there's kind of like landing a bit landing a joke having something you do and having your peers go that was cool yeah. you know that 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 lasts a long time that vibe you know because all 1, the rest is just time. distracting you know and it doesn't get easier like you said david you just no. are coming from the mark twain thing having to come up with new bits you know what i'm saying and like every if if, if everyone's going to come as comedians descend on a new moment you still got to deliver you know what i mean like there it's is all an no, audition. Yeah, there is no like, mm -hmm. oh, remember what I did in my last exactly. kind of thing? Use that. You know what I mean? It's like, no, no, you, no, no. You want to go, because it was a hard one. I mean, it was a big reunion, but it was fun. And your performing makes it more nervous because yeah. forget Ted Sarandos and Scott Stuber from Netflix are in the crowd. Also, you know, they're all buddies, but it's still work and it's still who did good, who, you know. You're going yeah. on after Conan and after... Uh, and we're an hour ben in. Stiller. I think David and I, there's like 10 <laughs> comedians before us and you yeah, got yeah. your notes. You go, oh, they're going to do the Sandler trouble true thing. Okay, so that's uh, done. Got, right. Chris Rock was sitting next to me. He goes, I got two minutes at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just getting <laughs> just whittled down. watching comics. But <laughs> yeah. you're right. You always have to prove yourself. There's a never-ending thing in show business because you feel like if you ever rest on your laurels and just, I showed up, I hate the idea, you know, idea of that. It's yeah. funny, Keenan, when I left uh, the show, there was an opportunity to maybe be on a show or do a show. But when my last sitcom stopped, I said, I think I want to take a year off. And they were like, don't, don't. <laughs> I don't care what you've done, what you think. They will forget. And just, you've got to jump on another one. Right? I'm like, God damn. Yeah. It's like a cattle prod on your back going, go. I go, so I'm going to go in my last show will air on a sitcom. I'm playing a new character in the fall on a new one. They're like, yes. Yeah. Nobody gets it's a like shit. It's like that just, Seinfeld joke. Like, <laughs> people would ask him like do you ever get tired of like you know telling the same jokes over and over again like another comedian would ask him that and he was like how many people do you think have seen your act you know? <laughs> <laughs> like you're not that famous you know what i mean you have to like yeah, true. keep fucking performing just keep and winning over the things people. that are silent yeah the, the things that are solid yeah exactly there's always the first time someone saw you like mark twain dana there's definitely people the first time they've seen me or you is on that they're like, oh, they just don't watch a lot of shit, but that mm -hmm. thing they like, and they go, yep. oh, these guys, oh, that guy I've heard about, is he any good? I'll decide right now. Finally stepped a toe in their world. Yeah. I was terrified on that because I haven't done a lot of stand-up recently, and then I changed the whole thing the morning of the show, and I sent the <laughs> notes in to the producer, and he didn't get it. And right. then the rehearsal, because I was playing the guitar, everything was so hectic and weird. I had nothing on the teleprompter, and so I was just doing jokes to the my driver, Gata, from yeah. Senegal, who was awesome. They paid to have a guy drive me around. I was trying everything out on him. He's like, you're my favorite passenger. I go, thank you. I'm, but I was- uh, He told me you time, bombed. First time car. doing jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, Dana killed. And they. the funny thing is you do these things and then they still have to cut it. And so you're still hurt by going, 
who the fuck cut that joke? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that one sucked. Is that the one everyone hated? And you like, mean the loudest no, no, no. laugh is being cut? Just yeah, yeah, I just yeah. want to check in on that. Right. Yeah. That's the great thing about live television going full SNL. It's like whatever you say out there, you say, and it is beaming out to the world. No, I like edit, that. Raw. No, Raw. And then you walk away, you shed it like a skin, and you you go to a party, you start the party at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> and I think that's where 20 years goes like that. You know what I mean? Like if mm -hmm. I was locked in the same character, I think it'd be a much, you know, much more slower, mundane. Yeah. But, right. you know, we go from idea and let it go, like you said. It's, it's it's hard, but it's a gift. If you're on, you see people, I remember when like uh, Julianne Margulies, she quit ER at the top mm -hmm. of the game. We're all like, what? Or the girl before her quit. And and then when you realize an hour drama is a never ending movie with the hours of getting up at five and just cramming lines. I mean, ER lines, forget it. Are and you then kidding? they just, just for Doctor psychological talk? reasons, they have to stop. <laughs> Doctor Dr. Talk, talk. Worse. <laughs> Doctor Doctor <laughs> Gibberish for hours. Doctor fucking blibbity blob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a bang. ten cc of an L nine five. Ringer's lactate. They they Cut. put their yeah. mini sides in someone's guts. <laughs> I and need they some. Just look down I need and some read dexatrine. Them. Damn it. Dexatrine. Right. <laughs> Cut back to the top. Fuck you're no, like, I can't I like do it get anymore. that shot. I know they go when they go going again. You're like, fuck! I finally got it right once. Move it's on, Dexatrol, you uh, fool! Not Dexatrine. Uh, Reset. Dexa, okay, Dexatrol. One more yeah. time, guys. My bad. Seriously, <laughs> no, like, no bad. one, no one even knows what we're saying. <laughs> Just keep moving on. It doesn't sound like a language. I'm Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld all of a sudden yeah. for no reason. <laughs> all right, what else you got? Did for I Keenan, tell you, Dana, Keenan, for Keenan, I have my my no, idea of Jerry. Seinfeld, who's a genius, I think he should do a vinyl album mm -hmm. and go Good. back and it should be a picture of Jerry and all he'll say on the album is, paper clips, why? Because <laughs> 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 only, Jer dot, only why? Jerry could do an hour on that They're and have it, have, it, have it be great. So 139 impressions. W why so real? few? I don't know. That's what That's that, it says here on the piece of paper. You know what I mean? So it must be true. <laughs> you were there with Daryl Hammond. Did he coach you at all on impressions? Oh, yeah. Um, he, coached, he coached by doing. I used to watch Daryl like a hawk only because yeah. he doesn't say much. You know what I mean? And he just kind of shows up, does his thing, goes in his room, comes out, destroys, yeah. and then kind of just disappears back into his trench coat. And I used to watch that and I'd be like, hmm, no. this is a machine right here. And then I heard him tell the story of like somebody asked him, like, well, how do you nail down your, your impressions like so solidly? And he's like, some are easier than others. But he went and sat with Bill Clinton one time to like really just capture him, you know, in person or whatever. And he was like, within two minutes, he was like, I know exactly who this guy was. And I'm like, now that's a real dedication. You know, that's he not always possible, though, I don't think. Well, it's at kind all. of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at uh, all. Hillary, Hillary, Daryl Hammond's coming by, wants you to uh, sit with us for a while. I think that's okay. Baby. Dana <laughs> knows right. that I have 1.39 impressions. Killed Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Tom Petty was your, was your mic <laughs> drop. I have Michael Tom J. Fox Petty. and then half a Tom Petty, and then that's it. Okay, Take. we've done it before, but give, give, give us 10 seconds of Michael J. Fox and Casualties of War. A movie no one ever saw. Okay. Hey, Sarge. Uh, hey, what are we doing here exactly? You know, oh my God. You got to give me a minute on this here, Sarge. Oh, Christ, Mallard. We love you, Michael. Yes. Yeah, that was good. Damn, that if, was if he's listening. really good. Yeah. See? Get it. That I'm was back. really good, man. That was oh, fucking shit. bullseye. This is one of our touchstones. We've probably done that at least yeah. 20 times. It always makes me laugh. It'll Can I ask, who is this guy? The world. Oh, that's that was, Mickey Rooney. I, I did oh, a situation comedy with Mickey Rooney, and that when we did that, <laughs> the when, world. We, when we did that sketch, I was just doing Mickey Rooney for Bonnie and Terry Turner. I was not; there was no writing, and he was the, he was the biggest star in the world in right. 1937. The world. This is 40 years later, and every day he wanted to remind us. You'd be coming down the hallway, and you would hear it. I was the number one star in the world. <laughs> you hear me? Bang. Bang. The world. <laughs> it was a beautiful pop. I like his scratchy voice because he's getting older. The number Bang. one star. 
telling was, someone at catering. He was an, a broke alcoholic for decades. So he would pull out five thousand dollars because he was doing a Broadway show while Look he was doing this. this. Mm-hmm. He goes, think I can afford lunch? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, man. He was the original Floyd Mayweather. He'd carry $5,000 around in him. Bang. Uh, Hear me? All right. Uh, well, Kenan, we've wasted his time enough. We, so good. Kenan, you're very, you're very beloved. And I, want, I yes. save this for the end because I think it was me, but sometimes history is funny that way. I think I was the one who named Phil the glue. Mm-hmm. That's my remembrance. And then I forgot to tell... Will Farrell that I was I I nicknamed him the straw after Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> oh, and then okay. when Probably I was hitter. thinking of, when I was thinking about this interview with you and watching you all these years, this is my nickname for you. Uh oh. <laughs> the mailman always mailman. delivers. Oh, oh man, that's so gangster. Thank you, man. That's a good one. I David, got, did you, you know. have one? Yeah. No, we came I, up with I really mean I'll that's, jump in on that one. I just yeah. got meditate on these guests, you being one of them. It's like He's the mailman. Thank yeah. you, man. Shout out yeah. to Carl Malone. I appreciate that. Yeah. I know. I know. It's That's where I was processing. But sorry, he Carl also Malone. always delivered with John but also, Stockton. Like, I, you know, I'm bad with, you know, accolades, especially yeah. coming from, you know, people that I admire. So I only send that energy right back to you guys. Like, it's so great to see you guys, you know, having these conversations together and like to be a fly on the wall listening to your fly on the wall. It's 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 so great. So. I'm just happy that you guys get along and, you know, set the example for everybody else that it's possible. You know what I mean? Like, we don't all have to be fucking we're, we're weirdos. Very, yeah. good, very good friends and yeah. knowing each other before SNL. He's probably right out of high school. But uh, I, I can say that when you see any of your peers, and just going back to Scared Straight, you see someone in the pocket landing in control, knowing, you know, all the... It's hard. It's live TV and what happened mm-hmm. in the moment before and don't try too hard and, and to see mm-hmm. someone in the pocket. Once you see it once, you're like a fan. You're like, oh, okay, man. that's all I got to see. And then you see everything else. It's Thank like, you. damn. But yeah, you were yeah. in the pocket on that thing and it, it it pops off the screen. So anyway. Thank you. I mean, we, we like all try to live people. up. <laughs> we all try to live up to our siblings. You know, like I yeah. come from, you know, by the time I got there, the show was 30 years old, you know, so we were all anybody that I've ever or has come behind me. We were all fans of the show first. You know, you guys were all, you know, performers in your own right, you know, coming to build something. But, you know, we get to walk into an already shiny lobby, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, continue it from there. So no one really had the attitude of I'm bigger than the moment or, you know, I'm writing the most ingenious shit. So. <laughs> we never played around with not wanting to deliver. You know what I'm saying? It was like, how dare you not in the temple of comedy gods fucking try to hit it out of the park with whatever you're doing if you get the chance. So, and also, how do you? It's so it's harder for you because we've done everybody in SNL before. He's done X amount of sketches. You just have to do new ones and new ones, and it's just so hard to think of a new mousetrap. It, it really is bits, man. Fishing for bits. Ba 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 bits ba bits. I like a yeah. I like a your your the way you talk, Keenan. A shiny lobby. I know there may be a character in that. Yeah, just the way you you express yourself, but like take it someplace exactly. That's a good one. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, poetry, basically. I have a lot of Irish relatives, and they talk in poetry. Oh, I like you know? that. It's not half bad. Oh, he's a genuine article. Yeah. Or just that you know. Just kind of like yeah, brilliant staring brilliant. out. <laughs> Into the staring out at the into the, in the rain. Yeah, just yeah. thinking <laughs> way out. How far can you go? Or just highly imaginative. But I mean that that's what writing will teach you to make your references very clear so you can give the image to others, kind of thing. Like I Clarity like Clarity is king. Yeah. <laughs> well, I and love originality you both. Is I love you both. I won't hold you. Miss you already. Thank no, you we so won't much. hold you, but we, we we'll see you. Uh, I like this f- figure speech. Someone said to me, "See you around campus." Yeah, we'll see you at the fiftieth or not sooner. Yeah. And we 1, wish 000. you all the best, artists for artists. Let's do it. Oh man, you guys are the best. Thank you, man. All right, see you, appreciate buddy. it. Absolutely. See you later. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence Thirteen. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. 
Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 